All right, once again, welcome to the Volunteer Factor and the Sustainable Development Goals. My name is Marissa Jalfusa. I'm a community facilitator and a project consultant with Volunteer Canada. And before we begin, I'd just like to acknowledge that today I'm coming to you from Montreal, Canada. And Montreal is located on unceded Indigenous lands. And the Ganya Kahanga Nation is uh, recognized as the custodians of these lands and waters. And we're off. Okay, welcome. So Volunteer Canada is, uh, has, was established to provide national leadership and expertise on uh, volunteer engagement to increase the participation, the quality and diversity of volunteer experiences. Our programs, research, training, tools, resources, and national initiatives provide leadership on issues and trends, as well uh, in uh, Canada's volunteer landscape. And Volunteer Canada works with a very, very wide array of collaborators, including volunteer centers, volunteers, nonprofit organizations, governments, businesses, and educational institutions. So before we begin, I would, uh, Debba, if you wouldn't mind launching our first poll. So the first thing I'd like to know is how familiar are you with the sustainable development goals? Is it something that you're not at all familiar with? You've sort of heard of them. Uh, you're somewhat familiar, but you're not sure how they apply maybe to you, to you or to your organization. You're familiar or you're very familiar. So very familiar might entail that you are maybe actually you've already integrated them in your volunteer program or in a program that you are uh, looking at okay so um yep what i see here is that most people feel somewhat familiar uh we have a good uh, we have a good proportion of people who are familiar with them a few <clears throat> excuse me and a few not at all familiar okay thank you very much thank you deb uh, okay, we continue. Now, just to give you a little bit of context, um, the Volunteer Factor and Sustainable Development Goals uh, project is, uh, today's presentation is within this project. Uh, we got funding from Employment and Social Development Canada. And one of the objectives around uh, the project is to, um, promote to help organizations promote specific type of volunteer opportunities that align with the SDG goals to build the capacity of organizations to recruit volunteers to work towards the goals. Because if we're aligned to the goals, we can um, more readily see how well we're doing and achieving them. Um, to focus on the impact of volunteering, very often uh, vol the way that vol local volunteers are contributing to the goals is not always um, visible or obvious. So, um, and also to uh, collaborate with volunteer centers to mobilize local communities. Volunteer centers are incredible hubs. They have uh, wonderful connections with their networks and they're great um, disseminators of information as well. And to encourage businesses to include SDGs in their employer supported volunteer programs. Very good. Um, so uh, we're, today we're going to talk about volunteering in Canada. We're going to talk about volunteering, but we're also going to talk about the SDGs. And finally, we're going to uh, come together uh, and how are they interrelated and how does um, implementing these and interrelating these, how does it benefit everybody? Okay, so first of all, um, according to uh, Statistics Canada, uh, the general survey on giving volunteering and oh, the general uh, survey on giving volunteering and participating uh, from 2018 um, indicated that 79 of all Canadians volunteer. Now uh, included in this are formal volunteering activities and informal volunteering activities, and, and sometimes both. Now, uh, whoops, 
excuse me. Um, now, what that means is that 24 million Canadians volunteer um, out of, last time I checked, we're about 38 million, but 24 out of 38 uh, million Canadians volunteer. This is very, very powerful. And on average, volunteers dedicated 206 hours formally, informally, or in a combination of both. So what we understand from this is that it's really worthwhile to uh, see the contribution of volunteers to the SDGs because it's very powerful. We're a large contingent um, and uh, that will be uh, really, really, um, it's very critical to engage with, to engage these two concepts together. I do want to clarify um, that uh, we uh, won't be discussing uh, how, to, um, how to find a volunteer position today. If you are, if, uh, you are interested in finding a volunteer position, we do have, um, you can go to our website. We have a whole list of volunteer center repertories and then um, you can definitely uh, access uh, some contact information for volunteer centers um, to do that. Okay, so that's how many volunteers we've got. Now let's talk about what kind of volunteering. Now, because volunteering is a social phenomena, it changes with the society and the context. So uh, what we know is that society today is very different than society 50 years ago. And so the concept of volunteering has expanded. So we've got formal volunteering. This is the volunteer that many of us are familiar with. That's when an individual uh, joins an organization and helps them meet their objectives and um, their mission through their volunteer activity. Uh, then there's informal volunteering, which uh, has been measured in the last 2018 um, Statistics, Can Statistics Canada, pardon me, um, the general survey on giving, uh, volunteering and participating. And informal volunteering can be described as helping people directly uh, to improve the community on one zone through activities and not on behalf of a group or an organization. Whoops, pardon me. Um, corporate social responsibility is, uh, can be described as the environmental footprint, charitable donations and employee volunteering and community relations. So um, probably many of you have heard of companies that get together and they repaint the library or they'll paint, uh, they'll uh, put in a garden, something like that. And so that's a uh, corporate uh, social responsibility. And um, lastly, individual social responsibility, that's, um, that's the kind of engagement that's part of our everyday life these intentional decisions that we make to buy um, ethical products, uh, to recycle, to compost, uh, to uh, uh, light up to our vacation choices. So um, it's quite vast. So we're quite large in numbers and the spectrum of what we do as volunteers is quite broad. Okay, all right. Now uh, we're going to move on to sustainable development. Um, and the reason I am putting up a definition of sustainable development here is that um, above all, um, this, the uh, sustainable development goals are about shared vision, shared mission, and also shared language. So um, sustainable development can mean a lot of different things, uh, you know, to different people. And here is the uh, definition um, offered up by the United Nations. And I believe the one that was used to um, further develop the SDGs. Now, essentially what it is, is meeting the needs in the present. And that means the needs of everyone, and that means meeting them equitably without compromising the next generation's ability to access an inclusive, sustainable, and resilient future. 
So sustainable development is meeting people's needs today in a resilient and equitable way and making sure that future generations are able to do the same thing as is our um, human right um, of everyone. Okay. Uh, Deb, is, are there any questions uh, relating to the topic today? Okay. Uh, we just had one question uh, that was related to interest in having some materials shared out afterwards that might help um, volunteer centers and others to be able to promote the SDGs in their oh. position descriptions. And I said, yes, that will be part of, of the work that's ongoing through the project. So it's great to see already that there's interest in looking at how to integrate the SDGs into the work of organizations. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Deb. So, um, okay, so uh, yes, and that is part of the plan. And on, um, on February 23rd, uh, we're going to have uh, not a hands on or as hands on as a webinar can get, we're going to look at some concrete ways that uh, people can, who are uh, running volunteer programs can integrate the SDGs into your program um, in concrete and feasible ways. We're going to try to hit those two objectives. All right, let's keep going. Here they are, the star of the show, the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, and so, <clears throat> uh, in essence, uh, what we're talking about here is in 2015, the United Nations General Assembly adopted 17 Sustainable Development Goals to mobilize global efforts to improve social, economic, and environmental conditions around the world. Now, Canada is one of 100, uh, 193 member states that agreed to work towards achieving these goals by 2030. So um, it's quite, quite a number of goals and it's quite aspirational in terms of uh, objectives. And um, I think uh, that's why uh, we can't un underline the importance enough of um, sort of gathering uh, together and working locally to achieve these goals. Um, I'll just go through them like really quickly. Um, essentially, they address poverty, hunger, health, education, um, gender inequality, clean water, energy, industry, reduced inequalities, sustainable communities and cities, consumption production, um, responsible consumption and production, climate, life underwater, life on land, peace and justice, and finally, uh, partnerships to achieve the SDG goals. Now, as I've uh, been mentioning these, it may, you may, it may have been running through your mind about the kinds of, which of these as a volunteer or as an organization, you're working, uh, you're actually, as we speak, working and contributing to achieving. Um, definitely, uh, so just a bit of history, the SDGs started out as the um, eight millennium development goals, and that worked um, specifically on extreme poverty, child health, and education. It had some success, but, um, Happily, the United Nations developed the SDGs with a broader scope and a clearer link to both developing and developed countries. Uh, so um, what this tells us is that the SDGs are not for some, but for all of us to work on and to benefit from um, in all nations and all sectors. And the success of the SDGs depends on local actions and connected to their universality. It's kind of like if you want to picture like some rivers going to the ocean. So um, you picture all the local uh, endeavors, the local organizations, the local groups, the local collectives, all uh, working towards the SDG, uh, sort of like rivers going to the ocean. That's kind of a, um, a metaphor for the local uh, level action uh, and the universality of the SDGs. Um, also, um, the SDGs are interlinked and indivisible. And a statement that I found on uh, 
the uh, Canadian government website, I felt uh, really uh, summarized it, uh, summarized the uh, 2030 agenda. Um, the 2030 agenda can only be achieved when no one is left behind, ensuring that every person can participate in, contribute to, and benefit from sustainable development. So um, very compelling. Okay, and so when we talk about uh, the 2030 agenda, again, um, the, um, there are 17 SDG, SDG goals, SDG, uh, sorry, I'm using an acronym, uh, Sustainable Development SDG. So um, there are 17 goals, but there are 162 targets. And now at the end of the session, I'm going to put in the chat a link where you can have a look. It's on the UN site and you can click on each uh, goal of interest and you'll see a target there. And um, they, uh, they suggest they break it down. They're like sub goals that are e more, um, that are easier to uh, maybe achieve or to conceive of uh, working towards. I uh, recommend that you do that because it's a, uh, it's, it's very interesting in how they've, uh, they've broken it down. Okay, so um, let's hear from you. Um, how do you think that local volunteers contribute to the achievement of the sustainable development goals? So we've talked about, um, and if you could uh, share your comments in the chat, I'm coming. Whoops, okay. So, um, We've talked about volunteers in a general way. We've talked about the SDGs in a, in a general way. Now let's look at how do these come together and how do they benefit everybody? Um, I found this quote uh, on the United Nations site, uh, the Department of Economic and Social Affairs, when they, um, the subject was uh, sustainable development. And the quote, I, th I thought, illustrated something that's uh, a very compelling reason to align with uh, the SDGs, which is our understanding of development partnership needs to expand to include actors who have traditionally been invisible. Volunteers are one such group who have played a very specific and important role in uh, extending uh, the reach of vital services. Okay. So, um, all right. And so other than making volunteer contributions visible, there are several benefits to aligning our uh, volunteer program uh, with an SDG framework. First of all, it helps to illustrate how volunteers are already contributing to achieving the goals in Canada. Now we saw that in the chat, um, volunteers are doing a lot and uh, I have a, a, a couple of other slides that will demonstrate that as well, but we know that. And uh, that this effort is sometimes invisible. So uh, definitely that needs to be made more visible. Uh, to raise awareness that the goals are relevant to ca Canadian communities. So sometimes um, very um, global, broad goals can sometimes feel like, whoops, excuse me. There we go. Uh, they can sometimes feel like uh, you're, you're, on the, you're on the ground and you're looking up at the moon, unattainable, or maybe sometimes we think it's somebody else's business that these goals don't have anything to do with us. Actually, um, all nations have issues related to the goals. All nations could benefit from uh, working on those goals and from working together on those goals, definitely. Um, uh, thirdly, to demonstrate how organizations are working towards the goals, uh, very important, uh, our organizations um, play a very important role in uh, keeping our communities uh, healthy and um, keeping things working well. And we want to be able to map that out and see that. Um, communicate to volunteers their impact in a compelling way. Um, 
In 2013, I believe uh, Volunteer Canada did a volunteer recognition study and asked volunteers, um, how, what is, how do you most appreciate being recognized for your volunteer commitment? And a large proportion of them indicated that they wanted to see the impact their work was having. And um, if you think about it, uh, helping a volunteer see the impact they're having in a local in the local community is very important, but then making the thread to how that impact, how that is impact the global community, how it's impacting that, that's very powerful and uh, very true and very compelling. And also, if we align to an SDG framework where we have a shared language about what we're doing, what we're achieving, we can also identify the areas where more work is needed. Right, so we can uh, see that, um, for example, these SDGs are, you know, advancing well, but these SDGs are lagging. So it'll it also helps to inform where we can further encourage uh, volunteers to engage to help us um, get ahead with these SDGs. Okay. Uh, Deb, let me know if there are any uh, questions. Anything? Um, anything to Rien à signaler? Rien à signaler juste à ce moment. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so um, again, uh, in this slide, what we did was we took the uh, general social survey on giving, volunteering, and participating um, from 2018, and we sort of overlaid it with the SDGs the, that they uh, could potentially be impacting um, as volunteers uh, engage in them. And so uh, what we've got here are, um, as you can see, what this is, is the number of hours, the number of hours on average per year that volunteers um, off uh, sort of were engaged in the different se sectors. And uh, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to break down the first three for you just to further illustrate that volunteers are already contributing. And when you contribute to one SDG, as we mentioned, they're distinct, but they're interrelated and they're universal. So um, if we look at the environmental sector, I'm just gonna, just gonna look at my notes because I don't know the SDGs by heart and I wanna make sure I don't make a mistake. So um, in the uh, environmental sector, and that could be if you're volunteering around organizing something around, uh, around climate change, or uh, it could be employee volunteers cleaning up um, a lake shore, or planting a garden, um, the, this could impact the following SDGs, clean water, uh, that's SDG 6, SDG 7, energy, um, SDG 12, responsible consumption, SDG 13, climate action, life in water, and so on. In the case of law, advocacy, and politics, where we see we have a lot of uh, people become, being involved as well, and this, uh, this type of volunteer work could be, it's, it's, again, these sections are very vast, but this could be something like um, advocating for, whoops, excuse me, advocating for, um, advocating for human rights or increased equity in hiring practices, for example. And um, so these might impact SDGs 5, uh, which is gender, gender equality, uh, SDG 8, which is about decent work, reduced inequalities, SDG 10, and SDG 16 for um, peace and justice. And finally, if we look at uh, social services, again, a very vast area where we might be talking about volunteers working in a food bank or volunteers uh, supporting youth who are experiencing homelessness, the SDGs uh, that they might uh, be contributing to achieve might be uh, SDG 1, ending poverty, SDG 2, uh, hunger, um, 
another SDG, which is um, good health and well-being. So um, I hope that this illustrates that the following points. First of all, we are already contributing to the SDGs, but perhaps it's not visible at this time uh, in terms of the alignment. Then, uh, more importantly, is the SDGs are interrelated. Um, even though they're distinct, they're very interrelated. And um, there's quite a lot of work already being done. If you look at these, uh, you know, 96 hours a year uh, on average for the environment and the law and advocacy and, and politics. So um, very, very important. I wanted to uh, bring a couple of examples uh, here again um, uh, around the uh, SDGs. Uh, these are agency related rather than volunteer activity. They're agency or Co collective uh, related. So the first one is the uh, Chatham-Kent Prosperity Roundtable. And this is a collective that's made up of residents, businesses, uh, nonprofits in the area. And their objective is to find innovative solutions to poverty and build an inclusive uh, community. And one of the ways that they do that is a campaign for a living wage. And the SDG target that they are contributing to, so remember we talked about 17 SDG goals, 162 SDG targets. Sounds like a lot, <laughs> nobody's, uh, but uh, in essence, it's they're just all broken down. And this agency, uh, this collective, is contributing to um, achieving the target of by 2030 to reduce at least by half the proportion of men, women, and children living in poverty. And if we take another example, this one is uh, contributing to SDG 4, quality education. Um, and we're talking about here Project Literacy Kelowna, and uh, they're in BC. Um, so the, uh, they're a nonprofit organization who helps uh, adults who want to improve their numeracy or literacy skills. They do that by offering one-on-one -on -one reading programs, uh, online resources, uh, tutoring, and uh, the SDG target uh, that they had was to ensure that all youth in a substantial proportion of adults, both men and women, achieve literacy and numeracy by 2030. So uh, volunteers are doing it, uh, are contributing to achieving the SDGs. Nonprofit organizations are contributing. Uh, volunteer programs and businesses are contributing. Volunteer programs in government and educational institutions are contributing. So it's just now a matter of speaking um, the same language around what we're contributing and, and how we're doing it. Uh, now I'd like to invite you to uh, participate uh, in the chat and um, tell us what SDG goals are you or the volunteers in your organization contributing to achieve. Let's see. Do we have any gender equality, wonderful health and well-being, yay. 11 and five, very good. Reduce poverty, excellent. No poverty, zero hunger, very good, yeah. And uh, so as you can see, they're quite interrelated. 17, 15, very good. 15, life on land, responsible consumption and production. Okay, three, five, 10, 11, and 17. So I think that we can see that when we start sort of thinking about the sustainable development goals in alignment with our, the activities of our organization, our group, our collective, be it what it may, um, it's not hard to start finding ourselves on that map, right? We can sort of see, um, we'll see also the, another way uh, to see that is that there are priority actions. There, there might be priority goals, and then we have these other goals that we're also achieving. 
clean water and sanitation. Very good. Excellent. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Keep them coming. And uh, it's great to uh, it's great to hear that you are um, you're reflecting on these. Very good. Okay. And uh, okay. So again, if we look at it from an organizational perspective, um, the SDG framework uh, can be used uh, in many, many ways to um, to strengthen our uh, the volunteer engagement in our agency. So first of all, it can um, it can have some impact on the engagement of our, our of our volunteers. And that could be, you know, uh, as a recruitment tool, so that um, uh, so that people understand that when they're volunteering with you, they're volunteering, and the volunteering will have a local impact, but also a global impact. But it's also a really compelling message for people to maintain volunteer engagement, um, and uh, to. Which leads me to my next topic: to by reporting, right? Um, a lens on uh, a lens to report on volunteer activities. So um, many of us have to uh, do some counting uh, around volunteer hours, numbers of volunteers, volunteer activities um, in informal and also in uh, informal settings, and. Um, if you can just overlay the SDG framework, it might look like it might look like some something like uh, 172 volunteers um, offered uh, 1,000 hours uh, to uh, contribute to achieving SDG uh, number one, ending poverty by uh, organizing collective kitchens in the neighborhood. So um, it makes for, it also makes for a very compelling uh, relating of uh, the results um, of your, of the endeavors and of the mission and activities. Lastly, uh, it, it also helps to recognize volunteers and then to uh, let your volunteers know the, um, that, that they're having this global impact uh, through their local action. Um, and I think particularly uh, today, where we are really aware through media and even just general, um, general perception of things that are happening here, but things that are happening on the outside as well, I think that that can be uh, very, very effective. And, um, in terms of the uh, uh, Volunteer Canada uh, organized with, again, with ESDC, organized uh, roundtables with organizations to discuss these, uh, these uh, SDGs and, uh, and if aligning might be, you know, might be of some use to them. And um, there's a few, uh, these are a few quotes from the report that uh, we wrote after that. And uh, the two uh, last ones I found quite, quite uh, compelling. So when you talk about things that people can relate to, such as ending poverty and hunger, people are really able to see the link between the goals and the volunteer role. And this is something that um, organizations and I guess volunteer, uh, any anybody that collaborates with volunteers is to really help them see the goal between uh, the the link between what the volunteer is doing, which uh, may or may not be obvious to them if they're answering the telephone or if they're doing translation. Uh, sometimes these indirect forms of volunteering, it's not obvious to the person uh, that they are really making a difference that they're really having an impact. And in this case, that they're not just having an impact locally, but they're help they're contributing to the achievement of the SDG goals. And the last one, which I really like, is linking volunteering with the SDGs demonstrates that a single act of volunteering has a broader purpose. Very important. 
So before I go on, uh, I would like, uh, I'm going to take a couple of questions before I uh, wrap up with the summary. Uh, well, does anybody have any questions? We have one question in the chat around um, how will we be measuring the impact of volunteering and its contributions towards the SDGs? Excellent. Very good. Very, very good question. And I can tell you that there are a lot of academic papers written on this. And um, so what happens is that even though 193 nations have um, agreed uh, to uh, work towards the achievement of these SDGs, um, the measuring, I don't think, has been standardized. Uh, however, um, and I will, whoops, I, I will definitely, um, excuse me, I will definitely um, put in a link. There's uh, one uh, link that I'm going to put in that takes you to um, the hub, and you can see uh, uh, how we're tracking. And also, there's another link that's available, um, and I think it's Statistics Canada is using um, data that they've collected on poverty, on employment, on gender, you know, on pay and um, environment and all things like that. And they're using those statistics to uh, demonstrate um, if we're moving, like, are we moving the needle on this? So that's one way. Um, organizationally, uh, definitely, I would say, um, and we'll, we'll get into this more um, on the 23rd, but anybody who has a volunteer program um, can look at the SDGs, uh, you know, make, identify the priority, look then at the targets, maybe then identify some targets and think about how they can express uh, what, they are, that what they've been um, achieving. And now in terms of how, um, how this information gets to, um, gets, uh, because we're keeping track, Canada has to report, and there's a, um, there's a, I think there's a report, but there's a, a kind of a summary that comes out. And so um, I'm not sure about that, and I can definitely look more into that. I know that there are places where they're getting information, specifically from Statistics Canada, but I'm not sure where the communication is happening between the community sector and um, the government or how we can make that known. So, but um, I will definitely have that information and uh, we're developing some tools around that. So that is forthcoming. I'm not sure if you want to take another question here. Yes. Or... Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. So one of the questions that we had was around, you had referenced some statistics from the 2018 GSS GBP, um, which of course were pre-COVID. Absolutely correct. And the question was, um, can you speak to how the volunteer landscape has changed in the new pandemic world with things like remote volunteering? How do we motivate, recruit, and educate volunteers on SDGs in this environment? And just before you answer, I'll just say that, yes, the I latest... Love, that, love it, love it. Sorry. Love that question. Yeah. <laughs> just on the GSS GBP, that survey is, is um, put out by Statistics Canada, and it goes every five years. So, yes, the, the latest information and data that we have is from 2018, and we won't have another survey until 2023. So yes, it is pre-COVID, and we will be looking, I would imagine, at in looking at some of those impacts of COVID, I would just uh, tell you that Volunteer Canada put out two surveys in 2020 to look at exactly that, what's been the impact of the pandemic on volunteering uh, for organizations and for volunteers. So I'm going to put the links to those surveys. They're up on our website, um, the reports from those surveys. So I'll put the links there and then I'll leave Marissa to answer more fully on the rest. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you very much, Deb. <clears throat> so definitely, um, as we mentioned, uh, there, there have been uh, real changes in terms of volunteering um, and also in terms of um, 
the way organizations are functioning and uh, also the, the types of needs that have appeared. Um, there, it's been, um, many of you here on this webinar are part of the uh, nonprofit um, world, if I may say that. And um, you've, uh, you know how hard you're working to keep uh, your services afloat and to keep your volunteers engaged. Um, I, do, I believe that uh, using the SDGs uh, can be very, very, I think, very positive in that context. Um, what, a few ways to do it, there's, uh, there's a few ways to do it that are going to be actually pretty um, accessible. Uh, Volunteer Canada is going to be developing tools. So we're going to, so first of all, this webinar is going to be recorded and you can definitely pass it along if you feel that it would be helpful for your volunteers to have a look. Um, we're going to, I have a survey question actually just before we close, um, asking what would be most helpful to you. We'll also have a shorter version that's um, just something that people can do around self-directed learning that you can send as an attachment to your volunteers uh, so uh, and to your boards and to the staff um, to, uh, to have this shared language and to have these shared goals. Um, the fact that we're in a virtual environment, I think, uh, makes things more difficult and also, it opens a lot of opportunities. Uh, for example, uh, I myself saw a volunteer commitment that's about two hours away from where I live, but uh, that can be done online. And it's a volunteer uh, position that I'm quite interested in and will probably go for, which I wouldn't have gone for otherwise if it wasn't online. So. Um, but definitely, uh, there's been a lot of adjustment. And uh, as Deb said, uh, there's a lot on the Volunteer Canada site to its um, any answer that I could give you in a couple of minutes would inadequately address that very, very excellent question. And um, yeah, so uh, that's, uh, I would say that uh, to go ahead and have a look on uh, the materials that Volunteer Canada developed on that. All right, so uh, before we wrap up, I just want to summarize uh, a little bit what we looked at today. So we saw that the SDGs are 17 global goals. It's about shared language and a common vision, and it goes beyond borders and sectors of activity and uh, to ensure sustainable, resilient, and equitable conditions in the present for people in the present and for future generations. Uh, that the, uh, we also know that volunteer contributions to the SDGs is critical, but not always visible. So it's important to link the activities of volunteers and the organizations they support to the SDGs to uh, help us um, as we mentioned, illustrate what the volunteers are doing to uh, contribute to the SDGs. Also, so we can see uh, where we need to uh, work harder because we're lagging behind on the achievement of these particular SDGs. Uh, also to bring home the SDGs to Canada so um, that it's not some, it's not, uh, some far away thing, that it's the business of uh, all nations and all sectors. That the SDG framework can support volunteer engagement, uh, reporting on activities, volunteer recognition, recruitment, and um, on uh, January, on February 23rd, we're going to kind of go around the volunteer management cycle and see the different doors, uh, the different things that you can do uh, at each level of the engagement cycle that will help uh, to align. Again, um, we're not talking about doing all the SDGs all the time, aligning everything. Really, we're talking about um, looking at something that you're already doing and adding an SDG lens to it. And that, that is a perfectly good beginning, um, which can hopefully lead to other steps.
Okay. And uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, Deb, would you launch the final poll, please? So um, the final question is to help us to understand how we can help you spread the word about the volunteer factor and the SDGs in the organizations, right? Uh, how can we support that? Okay, so um, if you could just let us know, how can we support you in learning more or either spreading the word in your, uh, in your agency about it or in your group or in your school or in your workplace. Um, that's really, really the objective of this is to raise awareness, to help people implement the alignment and then also to support collaboration. Wonderful. Very good. Very interesting. Social media content seems to be uh, having quite a few uh, votes here. Very good. Excellent. Thank you very much. I'm just going to jump in and say that it's, it's interesting for me in looking at different project work that it's very consistent in terms of the types of support and the resources that people will use. So this is great information. Thank you so much for sharing. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Okay. Uh, this, uh, this brings us to uh, a close. I want to thank you very, very much. I do uh, want, I would like uh, to just say a few things before we close. Um, on February 1st, uh, I will be uh, giving this, uh, offering this webinar in French, Le Bénévolat et les Objectifs de Développement Durable. Um, it's on our website. Uh, please spread the word if there are folks, uh, if you'd like to see it in French uh, again, uh, or if uh, there are folks that you know um, that might benefit from watching it in French, that would be great. Again, on February 23rd at 1 p.m., Local to Global, Integrating the Sustainable Development Goals in Your Volunteer Program. So some uh, very concrete uh, steps that you can take to be able to, uh, to do that, to be able to start uh, or uh, continue or, or go further. And um, really looking forward to some of the conversation around that, some of the ways that people have found to do that. And uh, these are some resources. Now, uh, some of the content that I addressed today was taken from our report, The Volunteer Factor and the Sustainable Development Goals that you can find on our website. And I'll, I'll uh, try to put these on um, in the chat. Um, and uh, again, the beta site that I talked about, the Canadian Targets and Outcomes, you can have a look at that. It's actually very interesting because this is a beta site, it's, they're still building it. So it's very, very interesting. And uh, of course, the United Nations, the SDG targets for each goal. So 162 targets, you just click on the SDG goal and, um, and then you'll able, you're, you're able to uh, see what the targets are for that goal. Okay. Um, I think that uh, this concludes this concludes our presentation, as they say. I want to thank everybody for uh, coming. Um, very happy to see uh, such you here in such large numbers. Um, essentially, that's kind of the spirit that's needed for uh, this our local actions to really um, to demonstrate our impact on a in a, in a global. Uh, in the global SDG um, goals and uh, the 2030 agenda. So